Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. As I promised in my last video, this is an updated guide for Ryujinx emulator where I'm going to be giving you a custom build that contains all of the latest optimizations and updates, allowing you to play some of your favorite Nintendo Switch games like Animal Crossing, New Horizon and Pokemon Sword and Shield at or close to full speed on your PC. This guide is going to walk you through installing your keys, getting your firmwares installed, installing games and game updates, setting up your controllers through a GUI controller mapping, optimizing the emulator and your PC for the best possible performance, and on top of this, I'm going to be showing you a brand new method of time traveling, which will allow you to move forwards or backwards in time in games that allow it like Animal Crossing New Horizon and Pokemon Sword and Shield. While this guide may seem a bit complicated, as long as you follow exactly what I do, you should have absolutely no problem running any of these games. If you need any help with anything shown in this video, please do ask me in a comment down below and I'll respond as soon as I can, otherwise head on over to my Discord server and we will help you in any way we possibly can. You can find a link to that server down in this video's description. As always, you'll find absolutely everything you need for this guide down in this video's description. Let's jump straight across to my desktop and get this setup guide started. Okay, first things first, you're going to need the custom build which you'll find in this video's description and you'll also need your prod.keys file. When you open this key file with notepad, you need to make sure that it has the key area key application 0A key. If it doesn't, it means your keys are outdated and you need to update them. In order to update your game on this emulator, you absolutely need these updated keys, so please make sure you have them. Now, in the event that you do not have updated keys, I will also be providing you with an Animal Crossing save. This save will work if you are on the 1.0.0 version of the game. To start things off, we're going to use 7-zip and extract this custom build to a folder of its own. Please be patient and wait for this to fully extract. Once it is extracted, we're going to bring it to the center of our window and I'm going to open it. You should find this publish folder like so. When you open it, you may not see the exe at the top, just click type here and it should jump to the top of your window. Let's now open this ryujinx.exe. Don't worry about this key file error, this is just making reference to our prod.keys file. I'm going to show you how to add that to the emulator right now. Once the GUI opens, you want to come to file, open ryujinx folder and you're looking for this system folder. Into this system folder, you want to drag and drop your updated prod.keys file. Please make sure to do this or the emulator is not going to function. Once you've done that, you're going to close this, then you're also going to close the emulator, then simply relaunch it. Once the emulator has relaunched, we're now going to be installing our firmware. There are several ways to do this. The easiest way by far is to click Tools, Install to Firmware, and here you can see we have the option to install a firmware from XCI or ZIP. Using an XCI is by far the easiest way to install your firmware since XCIs are very, very common. XCIs are, if you don't know, just games. You can see right here, this is my Yoshi's Crafted World XCI and I also have my Tokyo Mirage Sessions game. First of all, I'm going to select Yoshi's Crafted World. Since this is a slightly older game, it has an older firmware on it. This one happens to have 5.1.0, which is, to be honest, the minimum firmware you should be installing for this emulator's usage. Now, I'm not saying you need to install 5.1.0, you can install a newer firmware. For example, if I come to Tools, Firmware, then come back to my Games folder, I'm going to come to my Tokyo Miraz Sessions XCI, and again, I'm going to install this. This should install my 8.0.1 firmware. When I select Yes, it's going to do the exact same thing. And there you go, you can see the 8.0.1 firmware is now installed on the emulator. You can also install from a zip, so if you have a zip or directory download, all you need to do is select yours. My 9.2.0 firmware is right here. When I select it, it's going to give me the exact same prompt. All I do is have to select yes, and this is going to install 9.2.0 firmware, which is the latest firmware at time of making this video. This is all you have to do. Just make sure that you have a firmware installed that is somewhere between 5.1.0 and 9.2.0. Once it's installed, I'd advise closing, then reopening the emulator again. Next, we're going to look over some emulator settings. What you want to do is come to options, settings, then in this area, I am going to show you how to set up your game directories. Doing this is super simple. All you have to do is click this add button here, then navigate to wherever on your computer you have stored your Nintendo Switch games. 
Mine are in this Switch Games folder right here. Once selected and I hit the save button in the bottom, my games are all going to show up in my games list exactly like so. Now that I have my games showing up in this list, I can now show you how to update your game or add their specific updates in order to correctly work. For Animal Crossing, in order to create your own island, you absolutely need to update it. You want to right click, select manage title updates, you should see no updates like so. Next, you need to click add, then again navigate to wherever on your computer you have stored your games update. You can see my Animal Crossing 1.1.1, 1.1.2, 1.3 and 0.4 updates, just make sure you use any one of these updates, 1.1.0 will also work. I'm going to select 1.1.4, click add, then once it shows up in this list I'm again going to click save. Now that I've added this update, my game version in the games list is displaying correctly as the version I have installed, 1.1.4. Now in the event that you're not able to update your game, or for some reason your game just will not boot without a game save, I'm now going to show you how you can add one easily to your game. All you need to do is right click, select open device save directory, and then into this directory you want to place the save which you will find down in this video's description. Now as I've said, using this save and placing it into this directory is the easiest way by far to get into game in Animal Crossing New Horizon, but if you want to create a brand new character and island, you are 100% required to update your game to any of the versions I've previously shown. For these titles to work, you're also going to need the following settings. Come back to Options, Settings, then I would absolutely advise you to disable a Discord Rich Presence. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use the brand new GUI controller mapping in the emulator. I would advise leaving this Enable Dock Mode disabled, then on Player 1 you're going to hit Configure. Once you open the controller mapping window, you can see in the top left hand corner, Input Device, you want to select whatever your device is, be it a keyboard or a controller. I'm going to be using this X input controller, so all I have to do is highlight it, then I'm going to be selecting Pro Controller from Controller Type, then I'm going to map and properly set up my input settings. Now you can use handheld or any other of these, but I would highly advise using Pro Controller since it seems to be the most stable controller. Next, all you have to do is map all of your buttons exactly as I'm doing right now. Once they are mapped, I would highly advise setting a dead zone of at least 0.15. This is going to make sure that none of your thumbsticks or analog sticks have any drift or move on their own in the emulator. Once you have this dead zone set, you want to come to this profile section at the very top, click add and then you're going to enter a controller profile name. I'm just going to call this controller1, then I'm going to click OK. Once you've applied this profile, you should see it in this drop down list. Simply select it like so, hit load, and you are now done with mapping your inputs in the emulator. All you need to do is hit the save button in the bottom right hand corner, and we can now move on to optimizing the emulator for the best possible performance. OK, so moving across to our system tab, this is where you need to set up your region, system language, and your actual time zone for correctly displayed time values in your game. Since I live in Europe, I'm going to set my region to Europe then I'm going to scroll up through this list and find the time zone or at least an area in the world that's close to where I live. Europe Rome is basically perfect for me so I'm going to select it. You need to make sure to select the correct one for your own specific time zone. Next, you absolutely need to make sure to have VSync enabled, then you also want to make sure that you have Ignore Missing Services also on. If you do not enable Ignore Missing Services, games like Pokemon Sword and Shield and Animal Crossing are just not going to work. For the most part, I would advise not touching anything in this graphics or enhancements area, However, in a logging, for the best possible performance, you absolutely want to have all of these options disabled. Turning off all of this logging in combination with all of these settings I've just shown to you, especially this ignore missing services, can greatly improve your stability and performance on the emulator. And once you have copied all of the settings I've shown thus far, you are now basically done with setting up the emulator. Please remember that for Animal Crossing to work without a save, you absolutely need to have it updated, so please and make sure that you have done this. Unlike Animal Crossing, Pokemon Sword does not require its update to be fully playable on this emulator, so all you have to do is load it from the games list, then sit back and enjoy. 
The final thing I'm going to be showing you in this guide is how you can safely time travel, meaning go forwards and backwards in time in games like Pokemon Sword and Shield and Animal Crossing New Horizons on this emulator. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner of my game window, it is 8.16 on April 8th. You can see that this correctly matches my system time in the bottom right hand corner. Before you close the emulator or your game, you need to make sure that you are fully saving your game. This is very important because if you don't properly save, you're going to lose all of your progress and this time skipping or time travel is just not going to work. Once your game has properly saved, you can now close the emulator. Down in the description of this video, you will find this file. This is a program called Run As Date. Using a 7-zip, you're again going to be extracting this to a folder of its own. Then once extracted, we can delete this zip file, then open this folder. You'll find this runasdate.exe here. I'm going to advise you to right click, then select Run As Administrator. Once the application opens, you want to click this browse button here. Then you need to navigate to wherever your Reusing custom build, the one I just provided you is. You'll find the exe for it right here, all you need to do is select it, then click open. Once opened, you can see right here that you can set your date and time. By clicking this calendar icon, I'm going to set this to the 10th, which is Friday the 10th of April. Then you can also adjust individual time values with any of these options here. I'm going to set this to 10 p.m. on Friday the 10th of April. Then once you have your time and date set, simply click the run button. This is going to run your emulator. All you now need to do is run your game and once loaded into gameplay, you should see that your time has now been correctly updated to the time and date which you have already set in the run as date application. If you want to move further forward in time, again, you need to save your game, close the emulator, change your date, then relaunch with the run as date application. If you want to return to a normal time, all you have to do is again, save your game, close the emulator, then relaunch as you normally would by selecting the exe from its application folder. So there you have it guys, you now have the best possible setup for getting the best performance on this Nintendo Switch emulator. As always, once new optimizations and upgrades get added to this emulator, I will be making updated guides so that you guys get the best possible experience and usability out of this awesome emulator. As always, make sure that you're subscribed so that you get notified as soon as I release those brand new guides. For now, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly appreciate it. Remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.